Today's episode is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and for a limited time, all pre-orders of $25 or more with a Modern Horizons booster pack or box will get a sheet of stickers featuring not just the Card Kingdom logo, but some of your favorite modern decks for free. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So, Modern Horizons is here, which means we're doing a special episode today. Don't worry, the poll is in this article. If you want to vote for next week's Modern Horizon focused Against the Odds deck, make sure to follow the link down below. But for this week, we are building around one of the cards that I was most excited about to build in modern and that is astral drift our new modern legal upgraded almost functional reprint of astral slide so our plan today is pretty simple we are heading to modern to blink and flicker and cycle our way through some batches see if we can grind out value astral drift style so before you jump into it a quick reminder if you haven't already it would be so cool of you if you could take a second click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Abs and Drift. So our namesake card today, Astral Drift, pretty much Astral Side, three mana enchantment. When we cycle it or another card by time the battlefield, we get to flicker something. We exile it, it comes back into play at the next end step. So this does a bunch of different things. Uh, first off, we can use it on our opponent's creatures to stay alive. If our opponent's going to attack us with a huge Eldrazi or a big Death Shadow, we can just cycle a card for one or two mana, flicker the potential attacker, buy us a turn. However, the main plan of our deck is to use this for value flickering our own creatures. Just cycle a card, keep reusing entering the battlefield triggers, kind of grinding out this weird value. So what are we using with Astro Drift's grindy value? And first off, we kind of have our finisher. Siege Rhino comes in drains, and remember with Astro Drift, we can do this over and over and over again. We have Siege Rhino on the battlefield. During our turn, we cycle something, maybe for just a single mana, we flicker our Siege Rhino, it comes back into play drains for three. During our opponent's turn, we cycle another thing for one mana. Exile our Siege Rhino return to play Drain for three more, so we can kind of kill people with Siege Rhino just by repeatedly lightning helixing their face, essentially, without even attacking if we need to. Then we have Eternal Witness, and Eternal Witness is about as grindy as it gets. The main trick here is, with Astral Drift, we can cycle a card to flicker our Eternal Witness, and then when Eternal Witness comes back into play, we can get back the cycling card to do it again, which essentially gives us, like, an infinite blocker. We block a huge creature with Eternal Witness, exile it, comes back into play, get back the cycling card. So that's one of the sweet synergies. We can also just get back our good stuff that dies. If our Siege Rhino dies, our Astro Drift dies, Eternal Witness gets it back from our graveyard. So a ton of grindy value available. Maybe my favorite part of the deck, though, is Flicker Wisp and Wasteland Strangler. So Flicker Wisp interacts really well with Wasteland Strangler, and both cards interact really interestingly with Astral Drift. So the main trick here is uh, Flicker Wisp, especially with Astral Drift repeatedly blinking it, and Wasteland Strangler gives us this weird combo that can remove any of our permanents. So what we do is, uh, let's say we have our Flicker Wisp down, we can Flicker with Astral Drift, then we can Exile an opponent's land, their Karn, a big planeswalker, a powerful enchantment, and then Wasteland Strangler lets us put a card from our opponent's exile zone into their graveyard to give a creature negative three, negative three, so we get rid of that card forever. We put the Flicker Wisp card in the graveyard, it's not going to return at the next end step. We can also just do that with Astral Drift, like Astral Drift Wasteland Strangler against creature decks is absurd because we can like cycle something to exile our opponent's best creature, and then play Wasteland Strangler, put the creature that's exiled with Astral Drift into the graveyard so it's gone forever and not going to return on the end step and give another creature negative three negative three so it can't be like a repeatable two for one and even better with our cycling cards we can do this over and over again every turn we can be flickering our flicker wisp to get rid of another permanent and flickering our wasteland strangler to process that permanent away so just a really grindy loop of like infinite removal then we have ether vial which makes our Flicker Wisp, Wasteland Strangler, Eternal Witness plan, much easier on our mana. We get up to three counters, can put creatures into play for free, which means we have all of our mana available to either cast other creatures or to cycle a bunch of times to trigger our Astral Drift. Otherwise, we have Tidello Scholar and Kite Sail Freebooter, which are our combo hate cards, primarily Thought Seizes on a body, but they also work really well with Astral Drift. We can like play a Tidello Scholar, grab our opponent's best card, Wasteland Strangler to get the card out from under Tidello Scholar, and then we 
second cycle to flick our Tide Hollow Scholar, have it come back into play, get another card out of our opponent's hand, and then maybe we do it again. And we, like, cycle, we flicker the Wasteland Strangler, process the card away from Tide Hollow Scholar so it's gone forever, flicker Tide Hollow Scholar, do it again. Same things works with our Kite Sail Freebooter, too. Unearth kind of leads us into our cycling plan. So for Astro Drift to work, we don't just need Astro Drift. We don't just need creatures to flicker with Astro Drift. We need ways to cycle. So Unearth can be cycled, or it can get back like Eternal Witness, Wasteland Strangler, Flicker Wisp. So it offers a lot of value getting back our three drops. And if we really just need a cycling trigger, we can always cycle it away for two mana. But our main plan for cycling involves Life from the Loam and also Cycling Land. So Life from the Loam, just three lands from our graveyard back to our hand for two mana. Really good deal, especially with Dredge. So we can get it back to our hand every turn, cast it again, get back those lands, because what we really want in the late game is to have our Astral Drift down, have down some creatures to flicker, and then just keep using Life from the Loam to get back three cycling lands. Baron Moor, Secluded Steep, Tranquil Thicket, probably the best because they only cycle for one mana. Scattered Groves, a little more expensive for cycling, but we can fetch it out, so it works better at fixing our mana. But in the late game, two mana for our Life from the Loam, and then three more mana means we can cycle three times, flicker three creatures, and that's where all those loops we were talking about. Siege Rhino coming into play again and again and again. Flicker Whips eating away all of our opponent's permanents with the help of Wasteland Strangler. A turtle it is infinite blocking is going to just be happening repeatedly thanks to our cycling lads coming back over and over and over again with life from the loam. To stay alive, apart from just grinding with our creatures and using Astral Drift to fizzle attacks, Assassin's Trophy, catch all removal, worship mostly for the unfair decks. Our deck has a ton to deal with creatures. Like Wasteland Strangler with Astral Drift is absurd against creature decks, but I'm a little worried about like Storm, other fast combo decks. Worship is a way we can just jank our opponent out in those matchups. The rest of the mana base, we talked about all the cycling lands. Pretty straightforward. One Ghost Quarter for Tron, a bunch of fetch lands, some shock lands, some basic lands. In the sideboard, Knight of Autumn, another insane creature to enter the battlefield every turn. Against Burn, the life gain's absurd. Against decks like Affinity or even Tron, being able to repeatedly blow up artifacts, very, very powerful. Gilded Light, another cycler, can also fizzle like a big grape shot to the face. Removal wise, Path to Exile, Settle, more Assassin's Trophies, and then for combo, Surgical Nile Spellbomb for Graveyards, Dabbing Sphere for Tron Storm, Worship, more Jank about power, and that is Abzan Drift for Bodard, and that's our Against the Odds deck for this week. So, let's see if this actually works. I am really hopeful. This deck looks so much fun. Just so much value in flickering, and blinking, and cycling. Like, we're just gonna be going through our deck so quickly, doing so many cool, synergistic, annoying things. Uh, hopefully it's fast enough. That's my one concern, is sometimes you just die in, like, turn two in Bodard, and Astro Drift is essentially an enchantment that you play on turn three. It doesn't really do anything until turn four. So, a little worried about the fast match Matchups, but hopefully our Kite Sail Freebooters and Tide Hollow Scholars can keep us alive. And then once the deck gets going, oh boy, I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop it. The value is just so insane. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Let's get to the gameplay. See Abzan Drift in practice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. And I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. All right. Okay. Uh Against the odds time, we are sliding around in modern. Astral, well, astral drift. I guess we're drifting in modern. 20 years ago, we would have been sliding around, but <laughs> but it's modern. Uh, astral drift. And this hand doesn't have a drift, but we have, we have cards. Cards that do things. Bonet, passing, hmm. Gonna need to, I guess we can Assassin's Trophy land at some point. Tranquil Thicket. Well, Windswept Teeth, crack it. Take a Temple. White, black, black. Yeah, take a Temple Garden, untapped. And let's just Tide Hallow Sculler. Hmm. Well, we gotta take Sylvan Scrying and hope our opponent does not quickly assemble Tron. Double Oblivion Stone is double annoying. Pony has two Tron lands. They would have had turn three Tron if they stole that Sylvan Scrying. Zag's Chromatic Star. Ancient Stirrings. What do they find? Okay, just a forest. Well, that is less deadly. Plays the power plant. Opponent passing. We untap. Uh, go to combat. Attack our opponent. Hit our opponent. Run out. Well, I guess if they just Tron, they Tron. Run out Kite Sail Freebooter. 
Oh, there's a Karn too? Oh, good golly. All right, uh, take a Karn. What is our possible way of winning? Our opponent never drawing Tron. All right, I mean, I guess that's, I guess that's our plan. We hope our opponent does not ever draw Tron. If they do draw Tron, we lose. Urza's mine. Oblivion Stone. Okay, that can't do it yet. Opponent's passing. Okay. <laughs> no Tron. No Tron. Opponent passes. We draw. Uh, Astral Drift. Oh, play Verdant Catacombs. Crack Verdant Catacombs. Take a... Um... Godless Shrine. Untapped. Siege Rhino. I mean, we are fully on the hope they can't draw Tron plan. Opponent down to 15. Attack our opponent. Down to 12. Okay. No Tron. No Tron. Please no Tron. Forest. That's not Tron yet. <laughs> We're the aggro deck. Opponent passing. Oh. Okay. Let's see what we draw. Scattered Grove. Well, I'll go to combat. Attack our opponent. Opponent. Down to five. Huh. What do we do? Hmm. Play Scattered Grove. So our opponent has Ugin, Oblivion Stone, Worm Coil, one unknown card. So we can blow up the Oblivion Stone, cross our fingers. The problem is if our opponent draws a land then they can just sit on the Oblivion Stone till we go to attack and then blow it. If they cracked it main phase, we could blink Siege Rhino and win. All right, pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. I mean, I think we have to Assassin's Trophy and pray. Yeah, Assassin's Trophy, pray. That's our line. Oblivion Stone down, opponent gets a land. No Tron. Okay, not Tron, it's Worm Coil. And I think this means we win. I think. Opponent passes. Oh, this is cute. This is some cute astral drifting. Uh, okay. So, what we do is go to combat, attack with everything, and then astral drift whatever... Uh, I guess we can just astral drift the worm engine. Worm coil engine. That also works. Well, attack. Astral drift. I mean, this is not how we drew it up exactly, but... Uh, it is, it is winning. Yeah, see you later, Worm Coil. Astro Drift, coming through against Tron, our enemy. I was thinking we could attack and blink whatever Worm Coil blocked, but I guess it's probably simpler to just deal with the Worm Coil. Uh, okay, so Worship Out, Assassin's Trophies in. Surgical Extraction's in. Go down Unearth, go down Wasteland Stranglers, and go up a Nile Spell Bomb, and maybe go like... Ugh. One Eternal Witness for one Night of Autumn. I kind of want to keep one Wasteland Strangler. All right, keep it like that. Well, that was a good game. Our Drift came through. That is the sneaky upside of Drift is even when it's not on the battlefield, it can be powerful. Eh, okay. We have Loam Ghost Quarter. That's our main plan here. Opponent, Power Plant. And Chromatic Sphere. Opponent, pass it. Hmm. Elfern Catacombs. Goo. Uh, opponent. Kraken. Urza's mine. And all right. Tron has been assembled. Uh, we will take a... Hmm. Take a Temple Garden. Cycle Tranquil Thicket. Surgical would be sweet. Freebooter. All right. Well, opponent has Tron. And Surgical. Tide Hollow. Huh. <sighs> well, sadly, I think we just have to... I think we just have to Ghost Quarter. It's too greedy to... Try to tide hollow. Uh, blow up power plant, I guess. Opponent gets a land. But at least they don't have Trod yet. Uh, opponent. Tower. Sphere. Cracks it. And passes. All right. Staying alive. Surgical. Ether file. I'll play a swamp and run out tide hollow sculler. Take a peek. What our opponent's got going on. They don't have Tron yet. Huh. Well, we actually have to take Nature's Claim past the turn. Since Nature's Claim blows up our Tide Hollow Sculler. Well, yeah, ship the turn. No Tron Land, please. Opponent. Another mine. Okay. That's not scary. Opponent's passing. And now we can start loaming. 
All right. We untap. We draw. Windswept Teeth. Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Loam. Back a few lands. Ghost Quarter. Pass the turn. Discard Windswept Teeth. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Blow up tower. No land! Oh, strip mine! Strip mine mode! It's a power plant, but it's okay. Strip mine mode activated, and we are doing this every turn, and opponent scoops it up! Only one basic! Huh! Huh! Drift! We drifted to the game one and strip mine to the game two. Take it down, Trod! And, uh, yeah. That is, uh, what Drift wants to do. Huh! Sweet! <laughs> sweet, sweet! Alright, uh, Against the odds time, Modern Horizons is here, and we are astral, astral drifting, astral sliding, flickering, blinking, valuing our way through Modern. Uh, this ends fine. We don't have our drift, but our curve is fine. Loam is good once the engine gets going. We can cycle on Earth if we have to. We got something for creature matchups, something for non-creature matchups. So this, this ends reasonable. Also, just like... Sculler, it dies, get it back with Unearth is fine value. Uh, Alright, Scattered Groves, goo. We are going to need another land, but we are also a 25 land deck, so odds of hitting one, not that low. Opponent cracks Bloodstained Mire. Mountain. And, okay, opponent's burning. Well, play a Swamp, play Tide Hollow Sculler. Oh, wow. Searing Blaze, Lightning Bolt, huh. Well, we'll take Searing Blaze. This is kind of a unique take on burn. Pass the turn. Well, our opponent can just Rift Bolt our Sculler if they care. Rift Bolt's our face. Yeah. Down to 17. Light up the stage. Hits Bump in the Night Swift Spear. Black Leaf Cliffs. And Swift Spear. Sure. Land would be so nice for this Strangler. That would be very helpful. All right, Temple Garden, untap. Shocking ourselves is annoying, but it is definitely worth it to Wasteland Strangler. Kill Swift Spear, process away this Searing Blaze. And go attacking. Hit our opponent. Down to 17. So we know our opponent still has this bump in the night. Faithless Looting, Lightning Bolt, Bedlam Reveler. This is a matchup where blinking Night of Autumn after sideboarding seems good. Swift Spear. Uh, opponent. Bump in the night. Yeah. Combat. Attacks. Well, let's just block. Because what we want to do here, if we don't draw, uh, I guess we're missing a black source. Yeah, this is fine. I guess another untapped land would be the best. Opponent bolts our phase, keeps the swift spear alive. We drop to nine. Faithless looting, Bedlam Reveler, the two cards in hand. Opponent passes. Hmm. Interesting. So we can unearth... Alright, I think our plan is... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hmm. Oh, this is actually tricky. I guess we just have to try to play through the... Oh, but then we gotta shock ourselves. The Bedlam Reveler is the biggest concern. But we can't actually get rid of that at the moment. Well, I guess we could just Flicker Wisp Tide Hollow Sculler. I guess that's probably worth it. So let's just go to combat, get in with Tide Hollow Sculler, hit our opponent, Flicker Wisp, Tide Hollow Sculler, play Overgrown Tube, tapped, pass the turn, Sculler takes Bedlam Reveler, and yeah, now our opponent at least has to kill the Sculler before they get back Bedlam Reveler, and if they don't kill it this turn, we get to process it. All right, Faithless Looting. And this probably keeps our opponent from being able to cast it this turn. Like, even if they hit a burn spell to kill our Sculler, they're still going to be mana short on Bedlam Reveler. And then we can, like, reanimate Tide Hollow Sculler, Freebooter or something. Seems fine. All right, opponent discards land Swift Spear. Suspends Rift Bolt. Okay, that's good news. Opponent attacks. Well, we will Snap Block... Kill Swift Spear. Untap. We draw Windswept Teeth. Alright, so I think our plan is go to combat. Get in with Tide Hollow Sculler. Run out Freebooter. Unearth Wasteland Strangler. Target Freebooter. 
Process Bedlam Reveler. Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Down to eight. Take a Forest. And loan back a land. Pass the turn. All right, here comes the Rift Bolt, but we're still at eight, and our opponent's basically empty-handed. Rift Bolt, where is it going? All right, gonna kill the Scholar, sure. Opponent, what do you draw? No Bedlam Reveler! We did a lot of work to not have to deal with Bedlam Reveler. No, no, no. Slagstorm, all right, kills our creature, sure. Well, let's draw. No... Well, do we want to dredge? Yeah, let's dredge. Because we can dredge cycling lands. Windswept Teeth. Crack it. Take a Godless Shrine tapped. Loam back to lands. Um, Is there anything we would play here? No. Maybe Ether Vial? We don't even want Ether Vial, though. All right, let's just pass the turn. I think what we want is Eternal Witness to get back Siege Rhino. Opponent. Faithful Suiting. Sure. Keeps one card. Well, let's cycle Barrenmore. No dredge. Astral Drift. Well, that'll be good if we get it going. Dredge Loam. Loam. Barrenmore, Catacombs, Windswept Teeth. Cycle Barrenmore. No dredge. <sighs> Assassin's Trophy, eh? Well, all right. Let's play Windswept Teeth. Pass the turn. We might just be cycling Astral Drift, honestly. Our opponent might have second Bedlam Reveler. Bolts are face to four. Well, let's cycle Astral Drift. Uh, no dredge. Oh my goodness, now we just need a creature. Untap. Uh, no dredge. Another drift. Oh, uh, so risky. Alright, play Worship. Play Catacombs. Pass the turn. Creature! Creature! We need a creature! Vote it! Untaps! Two cards in hand. Passing! Creature! Uh, no dredge. Oh, alright. So play Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness. Get back Siege Rhino. Crack. Oh my goodness, we can't die, right? Okay. Crack Windswept Teeth. Get a Plains. Play Siege Rhino. Up to six! Windswept Teeth, go! Okay, two creatures worship. I guess we gotta be aware of double bump in the night. Cause that is, that is not damage, that is loss of life. So that is a way we could get janked out. But we get to start blinking our Siege Rhino opponent. What do they find? Searing Blaze hits us to three. Well, now one bump in the night would do it, opponent passes well now we are definitely dredging are we maybe we don't dredge all right let's dredge loan back some lands barren more scattered grove scattered grove go to combat attack cycle barren more no dredge into a land cycle scattered grove no dredge into a vial uh, all right. Um, play one sub teeth. Pass the turn. All right. Hold, hold, Rhino. Hold. <laughs> oh, they. Ah, Nava. All right. Well, that is that is brutal. That is insanely brutal. Okay. Well, Knight of Autumn's in. Gilded Lotus in or Gilded Light in. Wow, that's insane. That is insane. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, go down Assassin's Trophy. Go down one Loam, and I guess the Worship, run it like that. Oh, that is some brutal, 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 brutal running. Our opponent had two outs of their, two outs maybe in their deck, three outs of their deck, and they drew it. They had like one turn to draw it, and they drew it. We couldn't blink our Siege Rhino, because then that would turn on Lightning Bolt or anything to kill us, because we were on three, and we couldn't find another creature. Oh, man, that is insane. All right, all right, all right. Well, they had uh, exactly the right answer for what they needed. I guess we could see the power of the deck, though. There is definitely, there is definitely a lot of power. All right, we're on the play. Okay, 
Not a lot of action, but we do have ether vials. Well, planes and vial. Go. Yeah. Mountain for our opponent. Monastery Swift Spear. Yup. Gonna get in some damages. Well, take a vial. Wasteland Strangler. Now play vial. Overgrown Tomb Tapped. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Faithless Looting. Gonna go digging. Uh, opponent. Bloodstained Mire. Cracks it. Discard Soul Scar Bedlam Reveler. Blood Crypt Untapped. And Rift Bolt Suspended. Well, this is... This is good. This is good. I think we are going to blow our opponent out just a... Just a tiny bit with this Wasteland Strangler. Ooh, stack him up. Pump him up. Oh boy, and a Sculler too. Okay, so... Uh, well, this is pretty straightforward. We play a Forest. We play Race Wasteland Strangler. We kill Swift Spear and process the Bolt. Pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Ether Vial for Freebooter. Take, um, I guess Searing Blaze. Opponent, gonna Lava Spike us. Lava Spike, down to 14. Well, now we just want action. We have our vials set where we need them. Three and two, so no more ticking up after this, I don't think. Yup, another Freebooter. Well, go to combat, attack, attack. Uh, let's Freeboot, target our opponent. Steel, Searing Blaze, Ghost Quarter, Ghost Quarter our opponent. I'm kind of guessing they don't have swamps. Yep. Uh, pass the turn. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Vile. And opponent scoops it up? Whoo! Okay. Well, we didn't get to drift them, but we definitely got to kind of just blow them out. That went well. Uh, okay. Do we want to change anything else? Man, that was with no life gain either. All right, run it back. Ugh, all right. Zero lands. Well, can't keep the old zero lander, unfortunately. Well, all right. Clunky. We need black mana. All right, windswept teeth on top. That's good. That does get us black mana. What if it is for our opponent? Cracks it. We don't have any life gain at the moment, but blood crypt untapped. And Thought Seize. Sure. We're pretty fine with this. Our deck is pretty resilient to Thought Seizes. <laughs> and oddly, they might have to take Unearth, or the Thought Seize helps us. Takes Unearth. Yup. Opponent's passing. Well, play the tap land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Mountain. And Rift Bolt suspended. Opponent passing. Ooh, there's a Rhino. I'll play Windswept Teeth. I think we're just going to pass here. Rather than shock ourselves. Don't want to give our burn opponent two free damage. Rift Bolt, coming down. Then next turn we can Sculler. Then the following turn, maybe Siege Rhino. Down to 17. What do you got, opponent? Opponent's only got four cards in hand. And we're going to gain back some life, hopefully, at some point. Opponent passing. Well, crack Windswept Teeth. Take Overgrown Tomb tapped. Untap. And let's play Sculler. See what our opponent's got. Searing Blaze, Lightning Bolt, Dread Boar. Um, so we will take Searing Blaze. Play Tranquil Thicket, pass the turn. All right, land for our opponent. We knew about that. Dread Boars, interesting choice. Opponent passes. Well, let's see what we draw. Eternal Witness. Well, let's just Eternal Witness. Get back on Earth. In case our opponent kills Eternal Witness. Oh, I feel like we're in very good shape here. We haven't been drifting this game, but we're kind of just grinding through burn. Get back on Earth. Play a tap land. We've also played it very carefully to not shock ourselves, so we're still at 16, which is a pretty good life total. And about to go higher. <laughs> uh, with Siege Rhino, Aaron Mesa for our opponent, Monastery Swift Spear for our opponent. Searing Blaze. So our opponent's down to just a Lightning Bolt. That is all that's left in hand. We're going to be at 11, but we can Siege Rhino, Flicker with Siege Rhino, and that doesn't even include Drift if we get it going. Opponent passes. Baron Moor. Well, let us Siege Rhino. Go back to 14. Um... 
Do we want to? Let's not play Baron more. Yeah, let's not play it. I think it's better to not play it here. Save it for future cycling. Like, if we draw Astral Drift, having a one-mana cycler, so good. We can just start blinking Siege Rhino. Opponent's got a Bolt. If they attack, they can... Yeah, we're fine with this. Because we can just... Yeah, this is fine. We block. Opponent can Bolt, kill the Siege Rhino. But then we just unearth Eternal Witness to get back Siege Rhino. And our opponent is out of action and out of luck. Opponent. Oh, we can do some shenanigans. Gets a stopping ground. Sure. Crack it, crack it. Now we can unearth to get back Siege Rhino. And then Flicker Wisp Eternal Witness to get back unearth. So, unearth. Get back Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness gets back Siege Rhino. Flicker Wisp. The Eternal Witness play Scattered Groves. Pass the turn. Flicker Wisp get, gets back Eternal Witness, gets back Unearth to do it again. This deck can grind. It can grind. And we're at 14 against Bird, and there's a Rhino in hand, and our opponent's at 10, and life is looking good. Life is looking real good. Oh, there's Astral Drift, too. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Well, let's have some let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Um Astral Drift. Pass the turn. I mean, I guess we're just winning in multiple ways. We could have seized Rhino. Like, I mean, we got this. We got this unlock. Astral Drift, make sure we have it unlock. Opponent. Faithless looting. Sure. I uh, can't imagine they're gonna find 14 points of burn here. Not even really worried about them finding a uh, a Bedlam Reveler, even though it's their best card. There's Bedlam Reveler. Sure. Draw some cards. Opponent. Passing. Well, Siege Rhino. Put you to two. Cycle. Exile Siege Rhino. And drifted? Just drifted your burn? 17 to 2? <sighs> oh, that was a good performance. We almost had game one as well. Yeah, exile it. Cycle. Draw. Siege Rhino. I mean, we are going to attack. If we win with Flicker Wisp, that's fine. An opponent, super dead, and that is the drift. That is the drift. Well, we didn't drift a ton that match, but we were playing against Burn, which is one of the faster decks in Modern, and still able to take it down. Just grind through. Grind through with the drift. Sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are drifting in Modern, and we're going to keep this. Uh, we have a drift. We have a Rhino. We have a cycling card. We also have Ether Vial. This seems fine. Uh, so Vern Catacombs, crack it. Take a Forest and Ether Vial. Pass the turn. See what our opponent's doing. Shiv and Reef. Uh oh. Are we getting comboed? We might be getting stormed here. Opponent passes. I'll take up Vial. <laughs> Play another Vial. Vern Catacombs, pass the turn. All right, all right, all right. Well, if our opponent's storming. We're probably just going to be a bit slow, I would assume. Yup. Opponent. Island. And there's Brawl. So opponent's definitely storming. So this is definitely very bad news for us. Uh, we will take a Scattered Grove. Opponent. Passing. Take up our Vials. So we can cycle Astral Drift to get rid of Brawl for a turn? But I'm not sure that's even worth it. Huh. Well, that might be our only line. Play Windswept Teeth. Untap. Upkeep. Crack Windswept Teeth. Godless Shrine. Untapped. Yeah, I mean... Cycle. Drift. Get rid of Baral. Temporarily. Yup. Draw a card. Loom. <sighs> okay, opponent passing gets back brawl. We untap, take up our vials. If we can draw something to exile a card, we can process away brawl. Maybe. Ugh, third vial. Uh, okay, so cycle tranquil thicket. Hmm. Loan back some lands. Play verdant catacombs. Crackford and Catacombs. Take Overgrown Tomb. Cycle Tranquil Thicket. No Dredge. Ugh! Alright. Well, 
please don't kill us. <laughs> We're to the hoping they can't storm off part of the game, but they have seven non-lands in hand, so... Uh, killing us seems likely. Yeah, here they go. Combo time. Manamorphose for our opponent. Yeah, this is a hand that would be better in a grindy matchup. In a grindy matchup, we'd be fine. Against Storm, we really need our... Our discardy type cards on turn two. Our Tide Hollow Scullers and Kite Sail Freebooters and such. This hand's just a little slow for the matchup. Opponent draws, draws, draws. It's land. Rituals. Ritual. Wow. Okay, yeah. I mean, when they missed their land drop last turn, we had to assume that they had the win if they had Brawl. Grape shot. And then... Okay. Yeah. I mean, they just had... Yeah, we would have been dead last turn if we couldn't cycle drift. Well... Wrong, wrong side of our deck for that matchup. So bring in Damping Sphere. Bring in Worships, I think. Bring in Gilded Light. Nile Spellbomb and maybe Surgical Extractions. Go down... <sighs> Unearth. Go down alone. Probably trim back, like... Ugh. An Ether Vial, an Eternal Witness, a Flicker Wisp. I guess we're just kind of trimming across the board. These are all cards that we still want in our deck. I guess Eternal Witness is a little better. All right. Hmm. All right, something like this is probably our best bet. Uh, maybe Path over Assassin's Trophy. All right, try like that, I think. All right, we get to play first, which is hopefully helpful. Well, okay, we will keep. Hmm. Oh, this mana. Yeah, Scattered Groves go. Gonna have to wait on our vial, unfortunately. We need to be able to freeboot her next turn. Opponent. Spire Bluff Canal. And Sight of Hand. Opponent. Passes. Well, Verdant Catacombs. Crack it. Take a godless shrine and run out freebooter. Double gifts ritual serum visions. Huh. Well, I guess we take serum visions. Pass the turn. So opponent's hand is not super good. Steam vents tapped and passes. All right, well, Tide Hollow Sculler. Take, hmm, take Opt. Play Baron Moor, go to combat, attack. They can ritual out a Gifts opponent. Land, and passing. Scattered Groves, well, go to combat, attack our opponent. Hit our opponent. Down to 16. Scattered Groves. Ether Vial. Pass the turn. Alright. No gifts yet. Opponent. Mountain. And. Passing. Oh, let's see if we can draw like a surgical. That would be sweet. Take a Vial. Land. Well, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Ha. Huh. Play Vern Catacombs. Flicker Wisp. Flicker. Tide Hollow Sculler. Opponent gets back and opt. We get back our Tide Hollow Sculler. Um. Take the ritual. Pass the turn. My guess is we're still dead. Gifts ungiven. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, opponent. So if they take the normal pile, we can mill the rituals and leave our opponent with the past in flames. And hopefully without a brawl, they can actually combo. A braid brawl past in flames. So mill a braid. Mill brawl. Pass the turn. 
Opponent untaps. Steam vents untapped. Electromancer. Oh, that's a really good, really good draw. Hmm. Well, Crackfern Catacombs. Take a Swamp. Assassin's Trophy. Opponent ops. To the top. Remands. Oh, my God. Okay. That's a... That's a little, a little unfortunate. Just a smidge on the unfortunate side. No way. Huh. Well, our opponent ran pretty well from when we saw their hand, and it was two gifts ungiven. That's for sure. Ha. Ha ha ha. Alright. Well, maybe this is just a tough matchup for our grindy deck. Oh my god almighty. I'm struggling to understand how our opponent even had those cards in hand. How did they... Their hand a turn ago was two gifts ungiven, right? And, and lands? We have their hand up. It was... Yeah. An opt... And two gifts ungiven in a land. How did that turn into Manamorphose, Manamorphose, Reman, Grape Shot? I'm actually, like, honestly struggling to understand how this happened. With our opponent only having one draw step. The math is not is not completely lining up in my head. I guess they just chained them all together. Well, fair enough. Let's see if we can draw anything relevant. Take up our Ether Vial. Opponents back to having a full hand. They still have a gift. So we draw a Siege Rhino, which is a fine magic card, but not a magic card that helps us here. Yeah, we're we're dead. Well, yeah, kill Electromancer. Sure, opponent gets a land. Untaps, passed in flames. Yeah, okay. There's not even any point to trying. Well, that was interesting. Very interesting. All right. Against the odds time, we are Astral Drifting in Modern and... Well, we got Astral Drift. <laughs> That's about it. But uh, Astral Drift is, that is our namesake card. We do have a lot of cycling land, so we can hopefully turn our dead cards into something else. Uh, about it. Urz is mine. All right. So, looks like Tron. <laughs> I guess it's definitely Tron. Okay, so. Um, huh. let's just scatter groves go. So I guess our main plan is going to be, like, ghost quartering and surgical extracting. Surgical extraction's in our sideboard, though. So for now, we're just on the ghost quarter you plan. Unfortunately, the plan, a lot harder being on the draw. There's expedition map, so opponent is going to be able to assemble Tron. Unearth. Okay, so ghost quarter. <sighs> Blobbers is mine. Uh, opponent gets a, oh they're playing Eldrazi Tron all right so Karn Lock is a thing well that makes it pretty unfortunate that our opponent is just randomly Tronning Eldrazi Tron is not good at assembling Tron but or is it seriously oh all right well opponents going to have Tron and there's not a not a thing we can do about it unfortunately which should mean that this one's pretty over. Grabs an Urza's mine. Well, sometimes you just have Tron through Ghost Quarter, and then, I mean, I'm not sure what anyone's supposed to do about that. Like, what do you do about just double Tron on turn three? Urza's mine. Uh, opponent. Has infinite mana. Reality Smasher. Opponent, combat. Attacks. Yeah. So we take five, down to 15. Opponent, still has a bunch of mana left over. Chalice on one. Um, all right, crack this, grab a forest. Opponent passes, so we will cycle unearth. Wasteland Strangler. Well, there's an Assassin's Trophy. All right, play a Swamp. <sighs> Pass the turn. I think we gotta hope our opponent doesn't have anything crazy. We can Assassin's Trophy Reality Smasher, then untap Siege Rhino. But our opponent has so much mana. Opponent. Thought Not Seer. Resolves. Well. Assassin's Trophy Reality Smasher. 
Discard Wasteland Strangler. Opponent gets a land. Yeah. Gets to take our Siege Rhino. Wow, takes Astral Drift. Okay. Blast Zone. Still has six mana. Reality Smasher number two. Good God. Opponent, combat. Gets in. Hits us. Uh, yeah, down to nine. So we untap. We draw. Scattered Grove. Now, Godless Shrine, untapped. Run out of Siege Rhino. Hope our opponent doesn't have much else going on. Drain our opponent. And pass the turn. Eldrazi Temple. Uh, opponent has Dismember. All right. Well, this is just Eldrazi Tron at its absolute finest. As good as it gets for Eldrazi Tron. Down to one. Yeah. Well, I mean, not much we can say here. Good running. All right. On to sideboarding. Opponent just had literally their dream draw. Their deck is not good at, uh, is not good at assembling Tron, but they managed to have it on turn on turn four through a ghost quarter so games like that you just kind of gotta kind of gotta tip your hat and say you know good on ya so bring in the rest of our assassins trophies we can bring in the damping sphere we'll bring in another worship and then maybe a surgical we gotta be aware of the karn lock as well all right we get to play first Let's see how absurd our opponent's draw is this game. All right, we'll keep. We got a Damping Sphere, so at least we're not... At least our opponent's going to have to play fairly, which is good news. That our opponent is... They're not going to be able to just jank us out with Tron. Uh, opponent. All right. Verdant Catacombs, goo. Loam is nice, too. That can let us uh, attack our opponent's mana if we find a Ghost Order. Power Plant, opponent. Passing. Well, Crack Catacombs. Take an Overgrown Tomb. Tapped. Untap. Siege Rhino. Well, play a Plains. Huh. Let's just... Oh, we really want our land drop. This is tough. Yeah, let's play Damping Sphere. I guess that's the, the safest bet. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Cavern of Souls. Ah, uh, Eldrazi. And Chalice on one. Chalice on one is not super relevant against us. So let's see if we draw land here. If we do, we can play things. If not, we're going to have to loam. Okay, we do. So we will Tide Hollow Sculler. Take a peek at our opponent's hand. Reality Smasher, Dismember, Chalice, Matter Reshape. Right, take Dismember. Play Baron Moor. Pass the turd. And now we are pretty much to where we want to be. Pretty close. Opponent's hand, a lot less threatening, especially with a Damping Sphere out. Opponent, Chalice on one. Number two, sure. Opponent's passing. We draw a forest. Well, I guess we just press our advantage. Seizure, I know. Opponent down to 17. Get in with Tide Hollow Scholar down to 15. And now we're pretty close to getting Griff going. Hers is mine. Sure. Can play a matter reshaper. Yeah. Opponent passing. Vern Catacombs. Hmm. Well, go to combat. Attack with Rhino. Opponent's going to cash in matter reshaper. Draw a, another Reality Smasher. And then let's just play Vern Catacombs. Crack Vern Catacombs. Take a Swamp. Loan back a couple lands. Pass the dirt. Uh, opponent. Mindstone. All right. Trying to get to those Reality Smashers. <laughs> oh, they're getting, they're getting Damping Sphere locked. <laughs> I think. All right. Crack's Mindstone. Huh. Sure. Well, let's untap Dredge Loam. Go to combat. Uh, attack. We didn't hit a cycling land. But we can Verdant Catacombs. Crack Verdant Catacombs. Take a... Temple Garden. Untapped. Loam. Get back our lands. Flicker Wisp. Flicker Siege Rhino. Put our opponent to four. We go back up to 21. Pass the turn, and that probably does it in, I would assume. What do you got, opponent? It needs to be pretty good. Chalice, part 10. Well, our opponent got the wrong Tron. They got Chalice Tron instead of, <laughs> instead of actual Tron. Ooh, 
little does our opponent know that Chalice is not actually good against us. It is... I mean, I guess if you get it on, like, three, it's good. But in general, it's not very good against us. All right, run it back. That worked. We drew our damn big sphere, which helped, but... Um... Hmm. All right, I guess we can grind with this. Wouldn't mind another land, like a fetch land? Or... Yeah, fetch land's probably our best draw at the moment. Tower for our opponent. Or at least something that makes black mana for this Assassin's Trophy. Opponent. Sculler. Alright, Scattered Groves, go. Come on, manas. Manas, manas, manas. Opponent. Blast Zone. Alright, at least it's not Tron. And a Mind Stone. And Expedition Map. Ugh. Opponent passes. We draw. Black mana. Alright, there's black mana. So Vernon Catacombs. Crack Vernon Catacombs. Take a Overgrown Tomb, Untapped, Tide Hollow Sculler, take a peek. Smasher, Mattery Shaper, Chalice. Um, huh. Yeah, let's take Mattery Shaper. Pass the turn. We might actually be in okay shape now. We have a lot of Assassin's Trophies with these Eternal Witnesses. Pwn it. All right, cracking the map, getting a land. Urza's Mine, plays the Mine. Ooh, Expedition Map Part 2. So that means Tron is theoretically incoming. Opponent passing. We draw. Ether Vial. Now go to combat. Get in with Tide Hollow Sculler. Play Tranquil Thicket. Pass the turn. I think we have to blow up a Tron land with Assassin's Trophy when they go to crack. Assassin's Trophy Tower. No Tron this turn. Opponent gets a waste. It's Eldrazi Temple. Plays Eldrazi Temple. Chalice on one. Sure. Opponent passes. I'll go to combat. Get him with Tide Hollow Sculler. Play Eternal Witness. Get back Assassin's Trophy. Play Secluded Steep. Pass the turn. So we know there's a Reality Smasher that's going to come at some point. Hopefully there's nothing worse than that. Ooh, Karn the Great Creator. All right. That is arguably worse. Although we can deal with it. Ticks up. Opponent. Passing. We draw. Hmm. Godless Shrine. Now let's kill Karn. Actually, go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 12. Godless Shrine untapped. Assassin's Trophy Karn. Eternal Witness. Get back Assassin's Trophy. Pass the turn. So our opponent has Reality Smasher and one unknown. Opponent untaps. Uh, okay. Well, Thought Not Seer was apparently the one unknown. Can take our Assassin's Trophy. And that leaves us without a whole lot in hand. Yep. Takes Trophy. Well, now that Chalice is actually doing something. Uh, opponent. Cash is in the Mind Stone. Sure. Power plant. Getting closer to Tron. And passes. Let's see what we draw. Eternal Witness. I'll go to combat. Attack, attack. Opponent blocks. Well, we will Wasteland Strangler. Thought Not Seer. Kill Thought Not Seer. Draw a card. Eh, okay. And then loan back a land. Play the land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Loam is not bad. Especially with this Eternal Witness in hand. Alright, opponent. We know there's a Reality Smasher. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can't get Karn locked yet. I guess if they drew Tron, then they could Karn lock us. Opponent. Ooh, alright. Karn. Takes down. If they have Tron too, I'm going to be so sad. Although I guess we just attack everything at Karn and still get there. Grabs a Spell Sky. Plays spell sky. Well, Crackburn Catacombs. Take a Scattered Grove. Opponent passes. So Dredge Loam. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Everything at Karn. Opponent blocks. Karn dies. <laughs> okay. So Karn down. Eternal Witness. Get back Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp. Flicker. Eternal Witness. Alright. Opponent pays. Down to eight. Sure. Well, pass the turn. 
All right, opponent. We have a pretty good board, though. They're going to need something good. Opponent untaps at eight. What do they got? There's the reality smasher. And chalice on one. Sure. Opponent. Passing. We untap. Rhino. Ghost quarter. Ooh, that's interesting. Oh, well, play ghost quarter. Ghost quarter mine. Opponents out of lands. Loan back our lands. Go to combat. So if we attack with everything. Yeah, we attack with everything. Attack with everything. We lose one thing. But opponent going to drop to one. Yep. Opponent to one. Pass the turn. All right, opponent, you need something spectacular or the drift got there. I guess Eldrazi Tron. Opponent, untaps. This deck is pretty sweet. Does not care about the old Karn combo. The new hotness in modern. And, uh, yeah? What do you got? It needs to be really good. All his dust isn't on the table. They have to kill Flicker Wisp and deal with other creatures. I don't know if there's a way out. I don't know if there's a way out. And I think we might have drifted them. And we drifted them. Whew. Well, not much drifting that game. But, man, the deck has some power. It has some power. All right. Uh, drift, drift, drift. Sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are astral drifting in modern. And, uh... Eh, okay. We don't have a drift. We do have many ether vials. We'll give this a shot. Over on Tomb for our opponent. Untapped. And, oh god, Glistener Elf. That's scary. This is a deck that can kill really quickly now. Well, um, play secluded, Steve. Pass the turn. Yeah, we might just be dead. Like, right this second. Land scale up. Four damage pump spells game. Might of Old Crosa. Mutagenic Growth. Uh, opponent. Seven, in fact, here on turn two. Sadly, we can't kill the Glistener Elf. Opponent passes. Well, oh, Vernon Catacombs. Crack Vernon Catacombs. Grab a Overgrown 2. Untapped. Tide Hollow Sculler. Hmm. Well, take. Oh boy. Take Blossoming Defense, pass the turn. Opponent, Ground Swells, attacks. Well, we will block, because we have to. Scholar gives back Blossoming Defense, opponent passes. Well, Godless Shrine, untapped. Aether Vial, Freebooter, take Blossoming Defense. <laughs> All right, no lands. No lands, no pump spells. I don't know what else is in the deck, but... Neither, please. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Well, I mean, we block. Another groundswell. Yep. Opponent passes. I'll take up our vial. Well, okay. Oh, we don't have another green source, do we? Well, huh. Flicker Wisp. Flicker Godless Shrine. Untapped for the bluff value. Pass the turn. Oh, opponent top deck dismember. Oh, land, okay. Overgrown tomb. Opponent, combat. Well, we could still keep blocking. Attacks. Well, we will block. Opponent. Going to become immense. We would love to just run untap land for Siege Rhino. Opponent passes. Vile ticking up. Tap land. Well, that means to not die. We have to Assassin's Trophy. Oh, this is sketchy. Yeah, hopefully they don't have an island. Okay, Forest. Play Baron more. Play Aether Vial. Pass the turn. Staying alive-ish. Opponent passing. Okay. Take up our vials. Yes and yes. Loam. Okay. So, Siege Rhino. Put you to 11. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Passing. End of turn. Aether Vial. For Eternal Witness... Eternal Witness, get back Flicker Wisp. Untap. Vial stays on three. We might be surviving. We took seven Infect on turn two. Yup, tick up, tick up. Ghost Quarter. So, go to combat. Attack our opponent. Flicker Wisp. Flicker Eternal Witness. Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter our opponent. Loam. Get back the two lands. End of turn. 
Eternal Witness comes back. We take Tide Hollow Sculler. Stop on our opponent's draw step. Violin Sculler. And, and do we survive? Opponent scoops it up. Whoo, okay. We survive the infect somehow. All right. Uh, that was, that was impressive. <laughs> our jump blocking plan kind of worked. Well, worship out. Worship's bad. Path in. Path is good. Bring in assassins trophies. Go down. Uh, a loam and a unearth and yeah run it like that run it like that so we're on the draw here for game number two well okay astral drift cycling to fizzle an attack is actually potentially good in this matchup glisten rail for our opponent passes well, Scattered Groves. Well, let's see if we're dead on turn two. Opponent, untaps. Are we dead? That's the big question. We could be. Windswept Heath. Uh, opponent. Gonna have blue mana this game. Scale up. Yeah. Well, this is a new in fact. Mutagenic Growth. Cracks. Overgrown Tube. Untapped. And... Blossoming Defense. Sure. This is fine in modern. <laughs> I mean, what are you supposed to do about that? Turn two on the on the on the draw, you have very limited answers. There is not a whole lot. I mean, path, fatal push, lightning bolt, I guess. But even that, they had blossoming defense. Oh, all right. I guess we will try this. Although I'm not super comfortable with the fact that our hand is slowish. Verdant catacombs, crack it. Overgrown tube, untapped. Ether vial, past the turn. Uh, opponent would love a two drop. Two drop is huge here. Opponent cracks. Overgrown tube, untapped. And there's Glistener Elf. Two drop, please. Well, take up vial. We draw land. Well, when's up teeth go? All right, let's see if we are just straight up dead here on turn two again. Opponent. Are they living the dream? Cycles a street wraith. Another street wraith. <laughs> wow. Sure. Uh, that means our opponent could kill us would become immense here too. Forest. Might of old Krosa. Opponent, combat. Uh, attacks. Up to five. Well, end of turn. Crack one swept teeth. Take a... Scattered Groves. Untap. Still want a two drop. Take a vial. Baron more. No two drop. Well, play a swamp. Run out the saddest wasteland strangler. Could very well still just be dead here. Yeah, nothing to do cool things with. Oh, two drop would have been so good. We could have taken something from our opponent's hand and then strangled to process it, but. We're on the land plan this game. Opponent untaps. So removal spell plus pump spell equals us being dead. Opponent does have six cards in hand still somehow. Ink Moth Nexus. Oh boy. Opponent. No attacks. Well, take up our vial. See if we can draw something. Assassin's Trophy. Hmm. All right. Temple Garden tapped. Pass the turn. Opponent. Overgrown Tomb. Untapped. Now, we will trophy ink moth. Opponent gets a forest. Okay, what do you got? Dodging bullets ish. Opponent is down to nine. That's not a super high life total. Opponent combat. Attacks. Well, I mean, we got a block. Groundswell. Yeah. Kills Wasteland Strangler. Opponent passing. So, Vile is staying on three. Flicker Wisp is nice. That is very good. So, play a forest. Play Siege Rhino. Drain our opponent. Down to six. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Combat. Gets in. Uh, we block with Siege Rhino. Opponent. Become immense. Okay, so Psycho Baron more. Into a land. Vile. Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp. 
Siege Rhino. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. Sure. Blink Rhino, pump it up. It's blocked. Rhino returns, drains, and I think we took down Scary New Infect. Untap. Vile stays on three. And we got him. We got him. We got him. We died on turn two once, but Astral Slide will overcome. All right. All right. All right. Sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are Astral Drifting around Modern, and eh, we got an Astral Drift, and eh, Flicker Wisps. Those are something. One Cycler. Mana, little, little clunkish, but that's eh, all right. Let's see what our opponent's up to. All right, opponent leads on Ghost Quarter Ether File. Passes. Uh, okay, Overground Tomb tapped. Pass the turn. Gonna have to be aware of getting our lands attacked, although we can get them back eventually. Opponent. Ether Vial. Digging up. Horizon Canopy. And Thalia. Sure. Opponent passing. Well, Temple Garden untapped. Run out. Tidalo Skuller. Thalia does slow down our drift a bit. Oh, the noblest of high arcs. Resto Path Vial. Um. Hmm. I guess we take Resto. Pass the turn. Getting our Tide Hollow Path isn't the end of the world. It kind of fixes our mana. Opponent. Taking up the Vial. Leon and Arbiter would be a huge blowout. Opponent. Combat. Gets in for three. We take it. Down to 15. Uh, opponent. White mana would be fine. White mana, get rid of the ether vial. Or flicker it to reset it. I guess it's not gone. Opponent passing. Yeah. We draw vial. Well, play ghost quarter. Uh, this is clunky. Tap. Ugh. How do we want to do this? Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Ghost quarter ourselves. Oh, wait. Did they draw an Arbiter? Oh, we're dead if they drew Arbiter. Okay. Pump fake. Thank goodness. Grab a... Planes. Eternal Witness. Now, this is not the easy way to do what we're trying to do, but it is a way. Eternal Witness. Get back Temple Garden. Pass the turn. Um... Yeah, go attacking. If our opponent wants to path, that's fine. Opponent takes it. Down to 17. Well, we pass. No Arbiters, please. Untaps. Opponent. Takes up the Vile. Temple Garden. Sure. So we know most of our opponent's hand. There's one unknown card. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Uh, we will take it. Down to 12. Opponent passes. Okay. Well, Temple Garden untapped. Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp, Ether Vial. Opponent caches in a rising canopy, draws a card. All right. Go to combat. Get in with Tide Hollow Sculler. Opponent down to 15. Pass the turn. Opponent gets back a vial, but counters reset for the time being. Oh, we're getting close to drifting. We're close. Opponent. The Thalia is slowing us down a bit. Combat. Attacks. Well, block with Eternal Witness. Opponent. Blade Splicer. Yep. And passes. Ooh, Siege Rhino. Hmm. Well, let's unearth Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness. Get back Ghost Quarter. Play Ghost Quarter. Play our own Ether Vial. Pass the turn. Well, if we draw an untap land next turn, we can start attempting to accumulate Astral Drift value. Or at least get rid of our opponent's tokens. We will see. Opponent. Vial. Two. We know there's a vial and a path in hand, along with some unknowns. Opponent. Combat. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, let's block and... Yeah, block and take our beats. Okay, opponent pass. That's actually pretty fine. So we will take a swamp. Opponent gets back Restoration Angel. We drop to five. Okay. Well, take up Ether Vial. P 
play... Hmm. Are we in danger of dying? A little bit. I think we need to... I think we need to play Siege Rhino. Unfortunately. Play Siege Rhino. It's just too easy for us to die if we don't Siege Rhino here. And then hopefully next turn we can start drifting. So get down Siege Rhino, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, and they use their path. Vial up to three. Uh, opponent. Okay, declaration in stone. That's not ideal. Opponent attacks, attacks. Now we will block with eternal witness. Down to six. Opponent passing. Well, we get to take up our file. Scattered groves. Well, this is still a dangerous, dangerous point in the game. Hmm. Well. What if our opponent vials in Blade Splicer? One, two. So we get rid of that, we block that. I guess we're not just dead. Okay, so cast Astral Drift. Play Scattered Grove. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Takes up file to four. Plays a Ghost Quarter. Paths are Flicker Wisp. Okay. So we grab our last basic. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, Psycho Baron more. Get rid of the Golem. This is going to be a close one. If Drift pulls us out of here, that would be a very impressive performance. Ooh. Wasteland Strangler is interesting. Although, okay. That, hmm. This is going to be interesting. So, opponent hits us to three. We know Resto's incoming. Opponent passes. Token does not return. Well, take up file to three. We draw... Cycling Land is very nice. That is helpful. Oh, this game. So how do we do this? So we Flicker Wisp Ether Vial. Opponent puts Resto into play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Flicker Wisp. Target Ether Vial. Opponent Vials in Resto. Yup. Blink's Blade Splicer. Yup. Then we can... Wasteland Strangler. To kill... Thalia. Processing Aether Vial. And pass the turn. Aether Vial does not return. Opponent untaps. Leonin Arbiter. Okay. Goes to combat. Attacks. Attacks. So we block and block, cycle, blink, flicker, wisp. Whoa, they drew another path. All right. Well, paths are us. Well, now we might actually be dead. All right, secluded steep into freebooter. We lose wasteland strangler. Yeah, that third path. That was a brutal draw for our opponent. Opponent, passing. Yep. So we get to Aether Vial. Put Eternal Witness into play. Eternal Witness. Get back Eternal Witness. Untap. Vial staying on three. Wasteland Strangler. But our opponent has nothing in exile at the moment. Oh. All right, so I think what we do is, oh, this is this is gonna be a sweet turn. Ether vial, yeah, this is gonna be sweet. We're gonna see some drift power here. Ether vial, put eternal witness into play. Eternal witness, get back. Secluded steep. Cycle secluded steep. Drift restoration angel. Draw a card. Wasteland Strangler. Kill. The Blade. Uh, let's kill Blade Splicer. To get rid of the Blink Shenanigans. Process Restoration Angel. 
run out Kite Sail Freebooter. See what's in our opponent's hand. Vile Thalia. So take the Vile. And then, yeah, I mean, strip mine you. Pass the turn. Wow! Is Drift stabilizing us? Are we stable now? Resto can't come back. It's been processed. Opponent. Another Blade Splicer. Okay. Well, we just need stuff that cycles. That's all we need. Opponent goes attacking. Well, block, block. I guess that was a pretty bad draw for us. That might actually end up beating us. The golems just keep coming. Well, come on. If we draw something that cycles, we're good. Opponent passes. Vile stays the same. Unearth cycles. Okay. So we... Cycle, unearth. Blink, blade splicer. Draw, strangler. Um, yeah, let's just... Actually, maybe we just violet. Let's vile, strangler. Strangler, kill the... Yeah, let's kill Noble Hierarch, actually. Process Blade Splicer. Saga Clue. Siege Rhino. Alright. Pass the turn. Okay. Okay, okay. Opponent, what do you got? With your two Ghost Quarters, it's an Ether Vial. Opponent. Attacks, attacks. Well, we will block, block, block. Clear the board. Except we're far ahead and we have Drift going. This is where the deck seems so powerful. If we ever draw a Loam, oh my goodness. It is absurd. So board clear, opponent gets back another ether vial, sure. Passes. Vial, staying the same. Now we just want to draw cycling stuff. Well, play Tide Hollow Sculler. Snag Thalia. Play Siege Rhino. Drain our opponent, and the comeback is on. Pass the turn. No colored mana for our opponent, and this is Drift showing off what it can do. In these fair matchups, it is so insane. Opponent passes, sure. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going for it. Vile, Strangler. Strangler. Yeah, target Siege Rhino. Process the Thalia. Untap. Lethal on board. Go to combat. Swing. And opponent vials. Well, let's vial. Eternal witness. Eternal witness. Secluded steep. Secluded steep. Cycle. Drift away the high arc. And this is where the deck looks absurd. That's where it looks absurd. We draw a card. It's Assassin's Trophy, because why not? And... Opponent had us on the ropes, but we played a drift, and drift just took over. Drift just took over that game by itself. That was very impressive. So what did we learn this week about Abzan Drift, or Astral Drift in Modern, and first off, our last match, you only saw the first game of it, what ended up happening there is we timed out, uh, took a long time in that first game, and had like five minutes on the clock or something going into game two, and then that one ended with a loss with like a minute on the clock, so it goes down as a loss, but I really wanted to show that one game in specific, uh, timeout was kind of an anti-climatic ending to our episode, but that one game was probably the best example of how insane Astral Drift can be like we were so close to dead and so far behind on board and astral drift pretty much by itself was able to drag us back into that game and eventually win the game so overall in our video matches we went four and two counting our timeout laws although also lost a rematch to burn so record roughly in the 50 percent range which about average for an against odds deck most importantly astro drift was so much fun we did struggle against storm fast combo can be an issue we do have the tide hollows and freebooters but still that's not our most ideal match matchup. Uh, and that's kind of true of fast combo in general, where our deck is really good at grinding with fair decks, or even with control decks, and we have so many sweet tricks and synergies with Astral Drift, 
that we can outgrind the late game. The challenge for the deck is the games that end on turn three, on turn four. Those are the games where Astral Drift itself just doesn't have that much time to make an impact and looks a little bit worse. The good news is we took down Tron, we took down Eldrazi Tron, we took down Infect even through dying on turn two to the scale up combo. So we beat a lot of powerful decks and uh, the deck it's just really fun. If you like grindy synergistic decks, it kind of reminds me of Abzan Rites, our Reanimate Siege Rhino over and over again, Blink it over and over again budget deck we did a long time ago. This is kind of like a new take on that with even more synergy thanks to Astro Drift. And speaking of Astro Drift, Maybe the thing I was most impressed with is how the cycling ability is actually kind of relevant. Like, there are times where we just need to cycle it to get a threat out of the way or to do a cool trick with our Eternal Witnesses or Flicker Wiss or whatever. So the cycling ability is not bad. It's uncounterable. It is very unexpected. No one expects that to happen. Uh, so I was very happy, very impressed with how Astro Drift actually played out. So uh, the deck was just a lot of fun. The games go long. They're long. They're grinding they're tight we're not often just blowing people out but once the engine gets going the value is almost unbeatable once it starts rolling it just keeps rolling and there's so many tricks so much removal so many cool synergies that it's really hard for most decks to keep up with it so anyway that's been astral drift for modern that's been our against the odds for this week make sure to vote for next week's modern horizons deck until then thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here